Hello, I'm Nico from Smil Control Labs with my very first video tutorial. I want to demonstrate how to make a digital signage media player from nearly every non-rooted Android device. The device I will use in this tutorial is uh, this Samsung A tab, which I bought uh, some weeks ago. It is a standard consumer tablet which has Android 9 and the important thing is it is not rooted. But first a little warning. You will need to do a factory reset, which will erase all data on your device. I expect that you should know what you are doing and that you have good knowledge of Android. For example, if you know what is ADB or the bootloader, you are ready for it. The procedure I described in this tutorial will install our garlic launcher for Android in device owner mode. And then it installs the garlic player. This needs the help of a QR code. Device owner apps can only be removed with a factory reset. So again, please do not do this with productive hardware like your smartphone or tablet. Okay, now let's start this device. I have already done a factory reset and uh, we let it boot. In the meanwhile, we go to Smil Control and create the QR code. We have developed in our CMS a helper function to generate uh, the necessary QR code. You can create an account on Smil Control for free and get a two weeks license for testing. The link is in the video description down. We are now logged in the Smil Control CMS. Next, we have to do is to open menu point Android device provisioning. One of the coolest things are that you can configure your Wi Fi here, so the rest will go more or less automatic. Of course, Wi Fi can, buy, can be set on device 2. Or you can use the LAN cable if possible. But in this tutorial, we use the Wi-Fi config. After setting the credentials, we can generate the QR code. That's all. With this code, you can make your device a digital signage smell player. As you see, the tablet has finished now booting and it is ready for normal Android configuration set. By the way, I bought this device in Germany, so it is default set to German. Change to English is not necessary, but I will do it for better explanation. Let's do it here in Android English United States. Okay, next thing is we need to put the tablet in the so-called provisioning mode. To do this, we need to tap six times on welcome screen. Let's knock on the heaven's door. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now, the Android has recognized we want to go to the provisioning mode and set up a camera. With this camera, um, we can scan the previous created QR code. And let, me, let me do this. Show you. Okay. It had recognized the QR code. It had recognized, okay, we want to do something else. And let's, okay, say accept and continue. So I, I put it on the table for to do better handling. We have now to wait. In this moment, what happens? Um, the um, Android tried to download um, the garlic launcher and uh, set it as device owner. And this will happen at this moment. It may take some minutes, few or less, but we have to wait and get it. So. Now they want some information, <laughs> but it's too fast. This is a garlic launcher. The first thing is ask you, of course, this is a no-rooted device. It asks you, you want to access photos, media on your device. You say, we say hello. Allow. And the next step is it tried to download the garlic player. It has recognized that there is no garlic player on the device. Garlic player is the media player. The download will take some time. That's not normal because there's only 50 megabytes, but currently I'm in Greece and we have uh, <clears throat> at this moment a lockdown with a curfew to fight coronavirus and everybody's at home and uses internet. So internet gave us a little retro feeling uh, like the 90s. But in the meanwhile, allow me to explain why we do this. Let me explain first quickly what basic features a modern signage player must have. Security first. You don't want the user can close or uninstall your kiosk app or jump into the operating system or set a display password. I know this kind of jokes. Second, it must be ensured that the media player app 
is running and showing content. Third, the player app must be able to restart or report something in case of an error or a crash. You need uh, a kind of a so-called watchdog, uh, which reacts on this event. Uh, a watchdog is a background service, and when the player may be crashed, uh, ooh, player is not running, uh, I must do something. This is the watchdog. When the player gets his content only by network, it must be able to administrate it, update it, and reboot it remotely. And silent. Silent needs in this context no requests for user interaction, uh, no dialog box uh, which asks, do you really want to add style? And number five, last but not least, manual configuration via USB stick or a keyboard must also be possible. One solution for silent reboots, USB configurations and updates in the past was to use a rooted Android device. A lot of manufacturers in Asia, for example, built devices with special rooted Android images. But that's not optimal in my opinion. Why? The biggest pitfall is rooted Android devices are potential security risks. The whole device is completely rooted. So root means that there is a super user installed on the device, which called SU super user. Super user applications can be theoretically accessed from every other application or user. Super user can do nearly everything you can imagine on this device. Destroying apps, removing essential system files, uninstalling. Hey, you can have a lot of fun if something went wrong. Maybe you think you can block this, but to block this you need another rep. And this increases complexity. Every additional software you put on your device increases complexity. Complexity means more possibilities for bugs, more possibilities for security leaks, and more possibilities for so-called attack vectors. The better solution is to have only one app with a subset of rights. Other apps should use the functionality of this app only over defined interfaces. So we have more control about who and how to access the device. Much more specific control than on the rooted Android. Fortunately, this concept exists and it is called device owner. No second app can be a device owner. This is the app to rule them all. We created such an app, the Garlic Launcher. It is really tiny, currently less than 50 kilobytes. Garlic Launcher as device owner is really powerful. You can set it to block installs, uninstalls, system changes, and you can block also factory resets. Even the super user cannot break this easily. This is a perfect solution if you have an interactive kiosk project who needs touchscreen or keyboard input. Another pitfall is the common Android update problematic. Cheap manufacturers who sell you rooted devices regularly do not update their systems. In this moment, we have April 2020, you can buy really cheap but extremely 6 or 8 years outdated Android media player with Android 5 or even Android 4. For using at home, okay. But for a public display or touchscreen, no way. Okay, I don't want to go further any deeper in this tutorial. If you are interested in security topic, there is a detailed article in our Smil Control blog. The link to this article is below in the video description. In short, everyone knows perfect, perfect security is an illusion. But our task and responsibility is therefore to minimize risks as far as possible. So more or less we created now additional opportunities. We increased the diversity because now we can use devices without the need of root. So, let's throw a look on our tablet. So, as you see, the player is downloaded and restarted the system. And now the launcher starts the player after a 15 second delay. You can stop this delay uh, to configure the system, set a new content URL or whatever, or you can let it start. This is the garlic player, which has connected to the Smil Control CMS and gets a transfer code. With this transfer code, 
you can install this player, get the two weeks test license and can play with the player. You know now how easy it is to create a robust digital signage kiosk media player. Both applications we created, the garlic player and the garlic launcher are open source software. You can find the source code on the GitHub. The links to GitHub are also below in this video description. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our first video tutorial. You can subscribe to our channel if you like and feel free to contact us at Spill Control if you have further questions.